In this video, I will show you how to install the Tasmoda firmware on your Sonoff switches and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you be more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. In the recent weeks, I started to make my 3D printing workshop a little bit more professional and automated by adding Raspberry Pis with Octoprint to every printer. And now I wanna take care of the power management by adding these wall plugs to my printers to turn them on automatically when a print starts and when it's done to turn it off. I did a bit of research how to do this and frankly, there is so many options but using the Son of Wireless switches turned out to be quite popular. Now a caveat of the Son of switches is that by default they have a firmware that talks back to the manufacturer cloud servers and I don't want to share my data with them. So I looked for alternatives and the Tosmoda firmware is one of the most adopted options as far as I see. It's an open source alternative firmware that you can use to control these switches inside your Wi-Fi network it also integrates well with Alexa and Google Home and many more smart home controllers. So in this video, I will focus only on Tosmoda and how it is used with these kind of switches. Let's have a look what's inside of these. This is a Sonoff S20 and this is a Sonoff Basic. The newer S20 have three Phillips screws that you need to release. All the ones only have one screw that's hidden under a little sticker, so you have to destroy that. Then you can pop off the cover. The Son of Basic is even easier, there you can just remove the cover to get to the electronics. A few words on safety up front, don't do anything described in this guide with the switch connected to mains power. So remove any power connections from the Son of Mini and accordingly unplug the S20 from the wall socket. What you will notice is that none of these boards has any kind of USB interface that you could use right away to flash new firmware. But if you look closer, you will see that there is some connectors here, in this case unlabeled. In some cases, there might actually be labels on these like RX, TX, VCC, G and D, but the newer models seem not to have those labels anymore. Nevertheless, these connectors are the connectors of a serial interface that can be used to flash a new firmware to the chip on these boards. The chip is an ESP8266, which is widely used in many smart home devices. It's a little microcontroller that's pretty versatile and powerful enough for a lot of smart home applications. Actually, if you look at the Desmoda homepage, there is a list of supported devices, which is huge. It must be dozens and dozens of devices that have this chip and can be used with Desmoda. So these Sonoff switches are obviously not the only supported devices, but they are super affordable. And I also know a lot of people using them who are super happy with how reliable they are. Anyways, if you want to get them, I've put some links in the description of this video as well. Now, how do we flash a new firmware on these devices? As I said, there is a serial interface on the boards, so we will need to use a serial to USB adapter to connect that to a PC or Mac. These adapters come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. I have some examples here for you and I've also linked them in the description. All these adapters have in common that they have a USB interface. This one, for example, has a USB-A connector, which you directly plug it into your PC. Others might come with a USB mini connector, like this one, where you need to use a cable. What you will also need is four jumper wires to connect the USB adapter to the serial connectors on the Sonoff board. So the USB adapter has pin headers to make connecting jumper wires easy, but the Sonoff switches usually don't have pin headers. There's two things you can do. Either solder some pin headers into the Sonoff PCB as well, that's what I did here on the Sonoff Basic, or you can just stick the jumper wires into the connector holes and tilt them, and hold them tilted, so they will basically press against the metal ring around the hole. So let's connect the USB interface to the pins. The pin layout is documented quite well in the Desmoda wiki, so let's draw it here again quickly for the Sonoff S20. You need to connect the VCC, which is the plus cable, to the VCC on your USB adapter. Please make sure you use a voltage of 3.3 volt, not the 5 volt. Some adapters have a switch to change the outgoing power between 5 and 3.3 volt, so make sure that it is set to be 3.3 volt. The VCC is usually marked on the Tasmoda 
board with at least a little arrow and the metal connection around the hole is shaped rectangular instead of being a circle. The ground cable goes to ground on the USB adapter and on the Tasmoda side this is the fourth pin from the VCC pin if you include the VCC pin. So there are now two pins in the middle still unconnected. These are the RX and TX pins which are transmit and receive. The RX pin on the adapter needs to be connected to the TX pin on the Sonoff. The TX pin on the adapter needs to be connected to the RX pin on the Sonoff. If you want to learn about the pin assignments of different Sonoff devices or other Tesmoda compatible devices in general, check out the wiki I've linked in the description down below. It's super helpful and contains tons of information about every single device and wiring instruction as well. This is now how it should look like, so we are ready to flash some firmware. I'm going to use a free software that is called Tasmotizer, which I've linked in the description, that is for Mac or PC. This software makes it super easy to flash firmware literally with one button click. So once you have that ready and running on your computer, look at the list of available COM ports. In my case, I have COM5 and COM6, which have nothing to do with the adapter, now take the son off switch, press the little button, it's the only button and hold it pressed. Now if you choose not to solder your pin headers into the son off, also hold the jumper wires tilted so they have good connection at the same time. Then connect your USB adapter to the computer. If the LED on the son off starts flashing, you either did not press the button hard enough or you had the USB cable plugged into your computer before pushing the button. In this case, unplug the USB cable and repeat. After plugging in the USB cable while holding down the button, wait a second, then you can release the button. The LED should be off permanently now. Then in Tasmotizer, next to the port list, hit the refresh button. Now select the port of the adapter. It should appear in the list as a new port. In my case, it's COM3. If your USB adapter doesn't show up in the list of COM ports by now, you probably don't have the correct driver installed for it. So what you need to do is check what kind of chipset your adapter has. For example, the CHC40 or the FT232 and look for instructions how to install the drivers. I've linked some other videos in the description which explain that. Now select release as the software version. Optionally, you can select a language specific binary from the list if you want. Otherwise, the firmware is going to be English. Also, you can back up the old firmware. So if you ever want to go back to Sonoff stock firmware, enable the switch to back up the original firmware. Erase before flashing, I would enable in this case because we want to make sure that anything from the previous firmware is wiped from the chip and we can start fresh. Now hit the Tasmotize button to start the firmware flashing. If Tasmotizer cannot connect to the ESP and reports back with a timeout waiting for a packet header, you probably have mistakenly swapped the RX and TX pins or you did not push the pins hard enough to the side so they got no good connection. Swapping the RX and TX cables is not an issue, you cannot break anything and just try out if the connection works if you swap them. But you most likely need to start over again the power on procedure. After a few seconds, it should be done writing the image and report success. If a connection error happens during the flashing process, it's most likely again a bad connection of your pins with the main board. This is the reason why I prefer to solder these pin headers in in the first place. It just makes your life easier. Now, if you recycle power, the LED will start flashing again, reporting that the device is ready. Now, we want to connect it to the local Wi-Fi network. So you could now reassemble the cover and connect the son off to the mains power or still do this while you supply power to the device over the USB port. Take your smartphone now and open your Wi-Fi settings to search for a new network that starts with the name Tosmoda. Connect to that network. What should happen is that you get a notification that you can now connect to that new network or to sign into that new network. Confirm that and you will be taken to the configuration page of Tesmoda for that device. Here you can either directly enter your network SSID, which is the name of your Wi-Fi network, and also your password that you use to connect to your Wi-Fi. If you don't remember the name of your Wi-Fi exactly, use the scan for Wi-Fi networks link at the top of the page. 
It will give you a list of available networks, select the right one for you and then enter a password. You may want to give your Sonoff device a meaningful name in the hostname field so you can find it easier in your network later. Otherwise it's going to get a random name like Tismoda123 or so. I'm gonna call it Ender3Power. Make sure you don't use spaces or special characters for the hostname. Now save the settings. The Tismoda firmware will now restart and try to connect to your network. Now you can head over to your browser and enter the host name that you just have given to your Sonoff device starting with http colon slash slash. Otherwise you might just trigger a Google search. You should now get to the Tosmoda page of your device and there you can simply try to switch it on and off using the toggle button. Connected to mains power it should trigger the relay and switch on mains power for the connected device. Congratulations! Next up I will show you how to control these switches from Octoprint at print start and print end. So make sure you're subscribed not to miss it. If you like this video please do me a favor. I appreciate if you hit the like button or subscribe to my channel. But the real way how you can support me is go watch some of my other videos that I've linked for you in these two cards here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.